Hello everyone, I hope you're all really well. As you can see, maybe, today I am talking to you from my study. I thought that actually today I would try and make sure that you could see me properly and hopefully uh, we won't have any issues with uh, connection. The first thing I want to say today is a huge well done to all the common entrance candidates who have done all their exams this week, uh, last week and they've all managed to get all their papers to school and now they are with the teachers ready for marking. They will all be marked and you will get your results on Saturday and I'm sure you've done brilliantly uh, but I am really impressed that you've been so organised uh, and managed to get them all back to us so quickly so very well done to all of you. You deserve a really good rest uh, and I hope that you are enjoying the start of the Leavers programme and will enjoy it uh, as we go through the next couple of weeks. I want to talk to you today about something that has been in the news a great deal and I think it's something that we shouldn't ignore. You will all, I hope, be aware of George Floyd and what happened to him and the reaction to his death. For those of you that might not be aware, and I hope that this is very few of you, George Floyd was a black man who was arrested in America for apparently using a forged, a, a fake $20 bill. He was arrested and as part of his arrest, the police officer put his knee onto George Floyd's throat and kept it there despite the fact that George Floyd had said that he couldn't breathe and subsequently, tragically and very wrongly, George Floyd died later in hospital. Now, quite rightly, this has sparked huge anger in America and across the world. And the reason that it has sparked such anger is because of the unfair treatment of black, Asian and minority ethnic people in America and across the world. And I want to talk to you today about the importance of not allowing prejudice of any kind into our lives. I believe that we are one race, the human race. And within the human race, we should all be allowed to be the people that we want to be. And nobody should be treated differently because of the color of their skin, because of their gender, because of their sexual preference, because of their religion, or for any other reason. I have always been brought up to take people as I find them, to treat them as I find them. And I think that is incredibly important. And everybody should be treated with respect, with tolerance, and with understanding. And as teachers, we have a huge responsibility to make sure that the pupils that we educate are not only educated in an academic sense, but also taught the right values. And one of those most important values is that of respecting all other people around you and treating people fairly and equally. And I want you all, please, to follow the stories around not only the death of George Floyd, but the reaction that it has provoked. And as tragic as his death is, I really hope that we can all learn lessons about how to treat people and how people should be treated. Now more than ever, as we face this terrible virus that we are living through, we should be pulling together as a whole world. We talk a lot about that happening, but if there are still incidents like this happening, then we haven't got it right and we need to make a change. So I hope you will all learn about this and learn from this. I'm very pleased to hear, I spoke to my tutees about this uh, last week and I'm pleased to hear that forms are currently 
learning about people like Martin Luther King Jr. And we need to make sure that messages uh, continue uh, to be brought forward so that we can actually make a real difference. Now on to school matters. Um, I have been following the 1874 challenge with real interest. Uh, and I am so impressed with how well people are doing. Now I know that it is much easier to clock up kilometers if you're on a, on a I nearly said motorbike, that would be a lot easier, but definitely not allowed. Uh, on a, if you're on a bicycle, it's a lot quicker than if you're running or swimming. Uh, but that, that said, um, every single kilometer or every single half a kilometer that you add uh, makes a difference to the total. And there is there are not many kilometers left to fight for. There are only well, nearly 275 kilometers up for grabs. So even if you can only go for a run for 500 meters, do it, submit it to Mr. Guest and add it to your house because there are still quite a lot of people that haven't uh, contributed to their house. It's very interesting to see uh, that in Sheepshanks, uh, a huge number of boys have actually contributed uh, uh, something, and some as small as two kilometers, and that's still something. It's still contributing to your house. Uh, so well done to Sheepshanks. Um, in the running totals of houses, in fourth place at the moment is Girdleston on 222 kilometers. In third place on 376 kilometers is Crabtree. In second place on 441 now is Sheepshank, so they've had a very good week. Uh, and leading on 559 are Fox. Now, I know that, um, as I said, uh, those on bikes can probably go further, but I did want to draw attention to three boys uh, who have broken uh, the 100 mark, which I think is really impressive. I'm sure that all three have done it uh, on a bike, uh, but I did want to mention uh, De Windish, who has done 103 uh, kilometers. So very, very well done, De Wind. That's fantastic. Pasha has done 106. Uh, and don't forget, Pasha is one of the youngest boys in the school. So that is a really good effort. Uh, and Doherty, who uh, is still seven, he's not eight until August, has done 124.78 kilometers on his bike. Uh, and I think up until quite recently, he wasn't a massive fan of cycling. So uh, that is a huge, huge effort. So very well done to those three, but very well done to all of you who have contributed anything at all to the 1874 challenge. Uh, it's a really good idea by Mr. Guest, uh, and you've taken to it very well indeed. And then on to the compliments and show ups. Uh, with the compliments uh, in the house competition, in fourth place is Crabtree on 88. Third is Girdleston on 90. In second place on 102 is Fox. And then just ahead of them on 105 is Sheepshanks. And in the show ups, in fourth place on 88 is Fox. Then Crabtree on 95, Girdleston on 112, and out in the lead on show-ups on 128 is Sheepshanks. And that means that in the overall house competition, Crabtree are in fourth place, Fox are in third on 190, Crabtree, sorry, have 183, Girdleston are second on 202, and in the lead are Sheepshanks on 230. Three. Now, those of you who uh, are in Sheepshanks will probably wonder, when will we be able to have our house dinner? If you win, because there's still plenty of time for change. But whichever house wins, we will have a house dinner of some sort. We will either have a virtual house dinner, which could be interesting, and I'm afraid that Rob is unlikely to be able to deliver food to all of your houses, but we'll have a virtual house dinner of some sort or we will have a house dinner next term. But of course, if we do that, then the levers won't be able to be part of it. So we will do something uh, and we'll work out what that is uh, over the next couple of weeks. In the individual competitions for uh, compliments, 
There are three boys in second place on eight. That's Rakesin, Guest Gornal, and Stripton Minor. And out in the lead is Wang on nine. And then in the show ups on 14, in third place are Wang Mei and Avakian. In second is Baines on 16. And in the lead on 17 is Herat. So very well done to all of those boys. Um, I uh, continue to be impressed by the way that you are working. I, we, had a, we have a staff meeting every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, and in this morning staff meeting, people are still saying uh, that boys are working hard uh, and doing their stuff. Um, I want to have a quick word about exams. I mentioned it last week. Um, we do want you to try as hard as you can for exams, but we don't want exams to add to your stress levels or to your worries. The purpose of the exams is to see what you know and what we need to go over if there is anything. So do as well as you can, but don't put yourselves under extra pressure because actually the best thing about exams is being able to, to see what we need to teach you again or teach you more. Uh, and that's very much our job. So uh, that's quite an important message to get out there. We're gonna try and do two concerts before the end of term. One this coming Friday, which will be a concert uh, of recordings that boys have made. And I've had quite a lot of those in already and that will be on Friday at 6.30. And then on Friday the 19th, we are going to try to see if we can do a live concert involving just six boys and, and we've been in touch with them a little bit already uh, to see what we can do about trying to do a live concert. I'm trying to work out if we can bring those six boys into school for that, but I don't know yet if I'm allowed to do that. Um, if not, we'll try and do some clever uh, wizardry online in order to be able to, for people to perform live, but we'll see how, how that works out. Um, but look out for those. I'll send further details about how you can watch those uh, in due course. Boys, keep working hard. You're doing really well. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing some of you tomorrow if you're in year six uh, for uh, a few activities tomorrow afternoon. I think that the likelihood is, given the latest announcements by the government that we will not be opening the school this term for you to uh, to come back to lessons. I don't think that's going to happen, it's very sadly. Uh, if there's any change on that, we will jump at it, but I think it's unlikely. Uh, and so we are planning uh, for reopening in September. But you have been incredible at keeping going throughout this. Uh, keep it up, keep working hard, keep talking to us. If you've got any worries, then let us know. We're here to help. Uh, we're here to make sure this term can be as positive for you as possible. But very well done. Uh, and I will speak to you next week.